Now, the third mechanism that will have a crank as the input is <coughs> actually inverted slider crank mechanism, but we call it a different name, quick return mechanism or swinging block mechanism. The two are, have exactly the same uh, kinematic characteristics, but their construction are different. Uh, this is the swing and block mechanism, RRPR, but uh, in my case, the prismatic joint is over here uh, with the relative joint. In the other case, it is over here uh, with this relative joint. Uh, they have different uh, characteristics that are used in different places, in different constructions, uh, but in, in terms of kinematics, it is the same. Uh, they can be centric if the slider axis it passes through the uh, B0, the output peak axis, uh, rotation axis, or eccentric if it is as such. Uh, if in case of centric, the force transmitted from uh, link 3 to link four, output link 4 is perpendicular to the link the axis of the axis of rotation of link four, so that means it does work exactly driving force. Whereas in case of eccentricity, uh, only a component of the force is the uh, axis of driving force. As the eccentricity increases, that will uh, uh, this uh, driving the uh, uh, difference between the force transmitted and the driving force will increase. In order to have a complete rotation of the input crank, uh, A2 plus C must be less than A1, meaning A2 must be, in case of centric, A2 must be less than uh, A1, the fixed link length. The crank length must be less than the fixed link length. There is one important characteristic, whether it is centric or eccentric, and that is, notice, the dead center positions are t uh, lines tangent to the input link crank uh, uh, joint, uh, uh, circle. Uh, here is A2 and A1 are the two dead centers. Now, the angular rotation of the crank between these two dead centers, the angle less than uh, 180 degrees, is this one. And this is the swing angle, psi. Notice it is symmetric, number one, and this forms, since this line is tangent to the circle, this is 90 degrees, pi over 2 plus psi over 2 has to be equal to pi over 2. And that means phi plus psi must be equal to pi. Meaning, you cannot have for example, centric, a phi equal to 180 degrees. In that case, psi will be equal to zero. As you increase psi, phi has to decrease. Okay? Uh, so you cannot select phi or psi independent of each other, number one. Number two, there are only two design parameters, A2 and A1, and in fact, it's only one because it's the ratio. And that is A2 over A1 is equal to sine psi over 2 is equal to cosine phi over 2. You can select psi, determine A2 over A1. You can select phi, determine A2 over A1. Uh, and phi and psi will be automatically related with each other. So you cannot have a time ratio of 1. That is why it is so called quick return mechanism. It has, uh, when moving from A1 to A2, in, uh, when rotating counterclockwise, moving from A1 to A2, the angular swing is this much, five minus, 2 by 5 minus 5. The output link is going to uh, move slowly. And then when you are moving from A2 to A1, uh, the angular rotation is 5 the output link is going to rotate fast. For example, for 60 degree, 
psi. This is the curve. Theta 1, 2 changes. Notice theta 1, 4, 60 to 120. There's a 60 degree rotation. Phi is equal to 60 degrees. 60 degrees. So uh, if, if, if psi is equal to 60 degrees, then in that case, phi has to be equal to 120 degrees. So from here to 10 to 330 is 120 degrees. It is the fast cycle. As you can see, uh, that's the velocity, omega 1, 4, in negative direction, uh, because it's returning back clockwise. And when moving from minus 30 to 210, here is 0. Angular velocity is like this, and it is moving forward in like this. Notice angular velocity is almost, not exactly, but it doesn't change too much, let me say. And then look at this region of theta 1, 4. It is almost constant, as you can see. From here to here, it's almost constant. That's why it's called quick return. Usually, this is why it is used in a shaper. Uh, in shapers, you, you will see this uh, type of, uh, of formula. Now, uh, let me repeat. There's only one design parameter, and you can change it if you want. This is for 60 degrees. Uh, for any other degree, you can determine it. The fourth mechanism that is used as a crank, folding crank mechanism is the scotch yoke mechanism. This is also called slotted link. It is also called harmonic motion mechanism. Uh, usually you will see this scotch yoke mechanism with alpha is equal to pi over to 90 degrees perpendicular to the slide axis. And that is better because as I said, for the swinging uh, quick return mechanism, the force transmitted from the slider to the output link, in that case, is going to be along the slider axis. Although it's going to create a moment, it's going to be along. In this case, a portion, only a portion of this, uh, of this force is used to transmit, to drive the output link. Only a small portion of this uh, uh, force transmitted will be uh, driving the output link. Uh, this angle alpha is preferred because in that case you will increase the uh, for the same crank length you will be able to increase the output stroke. In case where alpha is 90 degrees S0 is equal to 2R, 90 degrees. S0 is the stroke is equal to 2R over sine alpha. As alpha decreases from 90 degrees, notice S0 is going to increase. S is equal to R, the output, the, the displacement equation, R cosine theta plus sine theta over tangent to alpha plus C. C, uh, you know, any constant. Notice this is why if tangent alpha is equal to pi, uh, alpha is equal to pi over two, this term cancels. You have r cosine theta plus c. That is why it's called harmonic motion mechanism. It is exactly cosine theta curve. If you take it the other way, it will be sine curve. It's a, a, a cosine curve. Okay, so that's why it's called harmonic. The slotted link, that's, uh, that is a slot. That's why it's a slot, so that's why it's called slotted link. Uh, scotch yoke mechanism, uh, I don't know uh, exactly, but I think it is the, uh, from the English uh, word, they have uh, found some similarity with the yoke. Yoke is the uh, for axis, in order to uh, 
uh, run the houses on a, on a cart, uh, they use this yoke. Okay. Uh, then we have, uh, these are all those previous uh, examples where, where we have a continuous input, a crack input, continuous rotation of the input, and, where, and uh, a swinging output. And the output swings either as a uh, oscillates back and forth as a, a translation or rotation, swings. Uh, there is another class of mechanisms, crank mechanisms again, with continuous rotation of the output. For the four bar, we call it drag link mechanism, or uh, double crank uh, sometimes is used. Uh, the four, uh, the uh, two, A2 and A4, uh, the, the links two and four have a complete rotation. So uh, the two, uh, when A2 is equal to zero and pi, the transmission angle is maximum and minimum. These are the two cases. Uh, and these are the equations, uh, the, the two equations uh, for the loop. It then, uh, these positions. These are not dead center positions. These, uh, there's no dead center, by the way. Uh, these are the two positions, uh, as such. <coughs> now, uh, if I use the cosine theorem for the first, uh, for, the, for these two positions, I will have A2 minus A1. You see, this is A2 minus A1 is equal to h3 squared, b0 uh, a squared, plus b1 b0 a4 squared, minus 2 a4 a3 cosine mu min. This is the triangle that I have solved, that you solved. And for the extended position, a1 plus a2 squared, a3 squared, plus a4 squared, it should be minus 2a3a4 cosine mu max. But if I take the external angle, it is pi minus mu max is mu min. That's what I, I would consider. And that is plus 2a4a3 cosine mu min. If I will equate this, these two minimum values, uh, I want both of those terms to be uh, the transmission angle to be equal at the two extreme cases. That is very, when you have the best transmission angle. Uh, that will be the best transmission angle. In that case, I will have these two equations. If I add these two equations, I will have these two terms will cancel. A1 squared plus A2 squared will be equal to A3 squared plus A4 squared. Again, as you can see, this is the condition for centric. It is the same. It results with this uh, result. And if I subtract these two equations, uh, A1 minus A2 minus A3 minus A4 cosine mu min is equal to 0. I will be using this equation later. Uh, actually, as I said, the critical transmission angle conditions are different. I have made both mu min and mu min uh, equal to two extremes, uh, and that is the condition I have obtained. Uh, you see, for a portion of, certain portion of, of the cycle, d theta 1 4 by d theta 1 2 will be greater. It will be faster. Uh, it will move faster than the input link. And the angular rotation uh, of the output link will be psi, which will be less than pi. It's d theta 1 4 by d theta 1 2 will be. Uh, 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 greater than 1. In the other portion of the cycle, it will move slower. d theta 1, 4 by d theta 1, 2 will be less than 1. 
And in the, they would be, we'll rotate by 2 pi minus psi, which will be greater than pi. The sum will be equal to it for the full rotation. Both of them uh, will have the, the same angular rotation, uh, you know, will rotate, have a complete rotation. In that case, there's a transition condition. Faster, the output link is faster than the input link, and there is a portion where the output link is less than the input link. The transition condition is when the two links detail, uh, have angular, the same angular velocity. d theta 1 4 by d theta 1 2 is equal to 1. d theta 1 4 dot by d theta 1 2 is equal to omega 1 2 over omega 1 4. That's the angular velocity ratio. If you divide by dt, both the numerator and the denominator. We know from mechanism's course, omega 1, 2 over omega 1, 4 for a 4 bar is given by this equation. Now, let us see. We have a 4 bar mechanism. Uh, theta 1, 4, theta 1, 2 are measured, and theta 1, 3 are measured from uh, the input link, A0, B0, horizontal. Now, rather than measuring the link in the, uh, angles, let us draw lines parallel to AB from A0 and parallel to AB from B0. Now, in that case, this angle will be theta 1, 4 minus theta 1, 3. This angle will be theta 1, 2 minus theta 1, 3, correct? Measured from theta 1, 2 minus theta 1, 3. Now, this angle will be theta 1, 3, because it's parallel to uh, the, uh, AB, AB. Now, A2, sin, this is like this A2, A0, A is A2. A2 sine theta 1, 2 minus theta 1, 3 will be this length. A4 sine theta 1, 4 minus theta 1, 3 will be this length. And this length will be equal to A1 sine theta 1, 3. The condition for d theta 1, 2 bar for over d theta 1, 2 is equal to 1 is A2 sine theta 1, 2 minus theta 1, 3 is equal to A4 sine theta 1, 4 minus theta 1, 3. This numerator and denominator must be equal to have this equal to 1. Now, this is A2 sine theta 1, 2 minus theta 1, 3. This is A4 sine theta 1, 4 minus theta 1, 3. These two to be equal, I'm sorry, Notice this A1 sine theta 1, 3 must be equal to 0. Now, in order A1 sine theta 1, 3 to be equal to 0, sine theta 1, 3 must be equal to 0, or theta 1, 3 must be equal to 0 or pi. Correct? So, we have the two limiting positions as such. The two positions where the input and output velocities are equal is this position. Now, if I call this angles alpha 1, beta 1, alpha 2, beta 2, notice alpha 1, alpha 2 are equal. Beta 1 Beta 2, notice, since this is line is parallel, this line is like this. Uh, it is the symmetric of that case. So, beta 2 is pi minus beta 1. Okay? This angle. And those are equal to alpha 1, alpha 2 are equal, and that is equal to A3 over A2. And beta 2 pi minus beta 1 is equal to cosine of A1 over A4, cosine of A3 over A2. I have these four equations using this these triangles. 
uh, A0, A1C1, A0, and A0C2, A, A2, A0, those from those two triangles, cosine theorem. I also have from the equality of the transmission angle at two extreme conditions, this equation. We can write psi1 is equal to beta1, notice, psi2 is equal to pi plus beta2, phi2, phi1 and phi2, notice a1, a2, a0, make an angle phi, so the angular rotation is phi, psi2 minus psi1 is 2 beta2, notice, psi1 is beta1, psi2 is pi plus beta2, psi2 minus psi1 is 2 beta2, psi2 minus psi1. Uh, from this equation, and psi1 is equal to beta1, uh, beta2 is equal to pi plus beta2, okay? Uh, psi is equal to 2 beta 2, okay? 2 beta 2 psi 1 half cosine uh, a1, a4 over a1, substitute this into here, a4 over a1 is equal to 1 over cosine psi over 2. Divided by 2, psi over 2 is equal to beta 2. Cosine a1 over a4, a1 over a4 is equal to cosine beta 2, and that is equal to psi over 2. And then so for a4. Again, let me repeat the ratio. If you are I'm considering the input and output link rotations, it doesn't matter what a1 is, okay? It's the ratio of the link sex. And then I have a4 over a1, this equation, design equation, given psi, I can determine it. a1, a, this is a1, this should be a1, I'm sorry, I, uh, I'll change it. A minus a3 over a4, this is what I have obtained in here. I have a1 over here, but I, maybe I wrote it wrong in that case. <coughs> And I have a1 squared plus a2 squared minus a3 squared is equal to a3 squared minus plus a4 squared. Or I can write it like this. Use uh, a3, uh, the, this equation, solve for a2, a3, a4 over a1 cosine the min. Substitute this term, use this term. And uh, use these equations to obtain a3 over a1 squared is equal to psi squared psi over 2 cosine squared mu min minus cosine squared psi over 2. You obtain this equation. And a2 is, is, is given by this equation. And a, you have a, a3 over a1. a2 over a1 will be given like that. So I have. For a given psi and mu min, I have two given psi and mu min. I can see the, the side on mu min and get the side on psi. Psi is the angular rotation of the output link between uh, in fast in the fast region. That is the angular rotation. The output link is moving faster than the input link in that case. So we have these three equations. A4 over A1, 1 over cosine psi over 2. A3 over A1 squared is equal to sine squared psi over 2 divided by cosine squared mu min minus cosine squared psi over 2. Uh, I have a parenthesis missing. A2 over A1 is equal to A3 over A1, put A4 over A1 cosine mu min. I took one special case, psi is equal to 140 degrees, mu min is equal to 65 degrees, alpha 4, 2.923, uh, alpha 3, 14 points, etc. A2 is equal to 4.6. A3, 
this is squared, 18 squared, this is 8 squared, 3.78. This is the mechanism. This is the motion curve. Uh, omega 1, 4 over omega 1, 2 is on one side. Notice in this portion up to here, omega 1, 4 over omega 1, 2 is greater than 1. Okay? The output link is going to rotate by for minus 60 some uh, minus 60 uh, something to uh, 100 plus something uh, 140 degrees will be the total uh, you know, 100 plus 100 degrees or something 100. Yes, I'm not sure it's, it's middle, at 15, 105 degrees. So this amount of angular rotation will be 140 degrees. And from here to here, it will be 360 minus 140 to 20 degrees. Okay, that's the way it works. In this region, it is uh, uh, so omega one four omega one two is this line? Yes. Uh, up to here, it is faster. The transmission angle, notice, has the same deviation on both cases, 65 degrees, is 25 degree deviation from the 90 degrees. So it deviates from 65 to 115 degrees. So uh, this is the angular deviation of the transmission angle. This is the way the output link changes, the output velocity changes. Did I do this? No, 140 degrees. Okay. Maybe I did it wrong. From here to here, it should be 140 degrees, I think. I'll check that. Uh, you see, we have seen the same mechanism structure as a uh, swinging block, but if A2 over A1 is greater than unity, is less than, no, A2 over A1 is less than, uh, greater than 1, meaning A2 is larger than the fixed thing, right? The crack length is larger than the fixed thing, right? Then we have, uh, the two links will be rotating. Uh, the output link will have a complete rotation. Now, in that case, uh, we have a single uh, equation, a single parameter, A2 over A1, uh, and that is phi, angular rotation of the input link, is two times cosine inverse A1 over A2, or the angular rotation of the output link is two times tangent inverse A2 over A1. These are the two limiting positions, and that's it. At positions I and double I, the input and output angular velocities will be equal. At these positions, they will be equal. And when the output link rotates counterclockwise from 100 degrees for a, 100 degrees from i to i, uh, omega 1 4 over omega 1 2 will be less than 1. And when, the, it, when it rotates from i to uh, double i, omega 1 4 over omega 1 2 will be greater than 1. It will be faster. I took a2 over a1 equal to 2. Phi is equal to 120 degrees. Now, from here to here, it is 120 degrees. And notice, again, it has a very good quick return characteristics. And look, the output link is almost 
moving in, at a constant speed during the uh, uh, two pi minus phi cycle, let me say, when moving from here to here, it is moving for, uh, for, uh, slow, outwardly moves slowly. Here is the angular velocity being equal to one. And notice how fast it moves when it is in the, during the return mode portion. But it is uh, not return, I'm sorry, uh, in the second portion. I, it's always uh, uh, rotating in the same direction. I think this is all that I'm going to talk uh, about for four link crank mechanisms. Uh, I haven't shown any example uh, in the, uh, the, during this uh, video. Uh, I will be solving, if you uh, study these uh, carefully, I will be solving examples uh, uh, in class using Excel uh, because I will be using solver in certain cases uh, for the optimization. Uh, these are uh, all these for the crank mechanisms for death centers or for uh, the actual case can be uh, very easily uh, solved using Excel. Uh, and you can analyze these mechanisms very easily uh, as well. Uh, I will be, uh, next week, during the class hour, I will be solving uh, several examples uh, explaining how these uh, mechanisms that we have discussed uh, can be applied in practice. Uh, they are very useful because yeah, we see these uh, falling crack mechanisms very often in all kinds of machinery, all kinds of, uh, because these are the usually, uh, if you are using an electric motor to drive the system, you need a crack uh, input at, uh, uh, no matter what. Uh, so, these mechanisms are very often used in practice. Okay, have a nice time.